Hi folks, welcome. I'm here in my garden. This is the place where I spend my summertime. Here I don't have electricity. I solved this problem for charging my phone and my laptop in the past year using a couple power banks or car batteries. But today I want to solve all my problems, all my needs, because I also make projects for a living. And I absolutely need to have a work workspace, like a working table, workbench, and I also need to have a power supply 220 volt here to the table so that I can attach drill and so and many other things. So for today's project, the sponsor is great because I'm talking about EcoFlow. EcoFlow is this all-in-one power unit. Inside of it, there is a huge battery. There's also an inverter and also a charging system. This is a smart one. And the best part of this unit is that you have four outputs with 200 20 or 120 volts uh, AC. You also have a couple, a lot of them, USB ports and USB-C ports. And you also have a 12 volt output as the car, the car, the car plug 12 volt. The best part of this unit is the, um, the way you can charge it because you can charge it connected directly to the AC from your house and you charge it within four hours or two hours, depending on how much power you want to push inside. There's a computer so you can control everything. And on, be on the back, there's this port, you can open it and you can see the other way you can charge the unit. There's a very interesting plug, it is this gold plug. And here you can connect solar panels that are already on. Are these panels are quite big and heavy. And there are like, you can flex them and bend them. So it's very convenient to transport them. But here we have a problem. I'm under many trees, so I have sunlight only in the morning and then in the afternoon there's too much shadow and they don't produce enough power for my needs. So I want to solve the problem. I thought that I live here on top, on top of a hill and there's always wind. So why don't collect the power of the wind and push it inside this echo flow. So I already know what to do. Let's move to the shop and start the project. First thing I have to do is take some measurements about the dynamo that is inside this bicycle wheel. It's a huge dynamo. I can cut away the parts so they can take it apart. I'm in a hurry, so this is the quickest way to remove it, but I remember you that you can also unscrew this part so you don't ruin this bicycle wheel. So after taking all the measurements, I can design on the Interfusion T360 the model, and now my idea is to insert this dynamo into a solid wood block. So I can put it in the center, cut the circular shape I really need. And at this point, I realized that for a future pro uh, process of this project will be much easier for me working with slices of wood instead of a solid wood block. So I bought this very cheap cutting board from kitchen and um, yeah, I designed them into Fusion 360 so that I continue the project and I make sure that I can insert the dynamo as well. Okay, now I designed blades that goes around. This has a very precise angle of attack, 35 degrees, which is the best angle for propulsion against the wind. So I push, push them down, cut away the slots, remove the blades that aren't really necessary, and this is the end result. This is what I really need, is a circular wood block with these slices in the diagonal. So I cannot cut them in one single pass using my CNC because I cannot go diagonal. So I will just mark a circular shape in the middle and also the position of all the blades. mark the position of the blades. I didn't cut them all the way through. I will use another kind of saw. But you can see I also made a lot of holes. This helped me to align all the cutting boards using some very long screws. And now let's move to my band saw. The table base can move 
I can put it at a very precise angle. So I am helping me with this wood block and it is 35 degrees, which is the best angle against the wind. I can use the bandsaw to cut away pieces. Unfortunately, it is a very old bandsaw, so it doesn't cut very well. But after maybe 10 minutes, I cut away all the slots. And you can see from this shot that this is the result that I really need. To remove the parts, then I can take a hammer and a chisel and yeah, with a lot of patience, I can go and with my hand and remove the part. Put some lever force and the part will go away. So this took me quite some time, like an hour. And this finally is the piece, just like the Fusion 360 design. Perfect. Now let's take some wood boards because we need to make the blades of the windmill. I have to give a very precise shape to the blades so that we have much more power that spin the blade, the windmill, faster. So let's think about the, an airplane and see the wing of the airplane. The air that hit the front of the wing will split in two. We have air going up and air going below. What happens is quite interesting. The air that goes up will accelerate, go faster, and the air that goes down goes slower. So this difference of velocity will increase the pressure. So basically what happens is that the wind wing will uh, will be suck from uh, the top and push from the bottom this will improve acceleration and power so this is the same shape i want to give to my windmill and after cutting the wood you can see that basically it looks like i'm pretty sure it will work quite well so this will increase the power and the electric production of the windmill so it's a bit of, a little trick that i really suggest you to make yourself i can put some silicone and a lot of screws to secure the windmill blades inside the base structure the the silicone is just to keep everything sturdy in place and other screw will make sure that the other parts doesn't go away because this windmill will stay under the rain and under bad weather condition for many years is absolutely crucial to protect all the wood with a very good quality stained wood. This creates a little layer of rubber and seal all the parts. Later I'll always I will pass some sandpaper to remove the excess and I'm pretty impressed of about how big this windmill is coming. The dynamo will fit here, you can see that it is a precise fit, but it's also a very good idea to glue the part in place. In this case, you have to choose a very good quality glue. I'm not using silicone, but polyurethanic glue, which sticks much better to wood and metal, and yeah, it's much better than silicone for sure. I let the glue dry for about 12 hours, and I can handle the windmill without problems, so, yeah, it's coming great. Now let's talk about the best part of this project. I want my wheel mill able to follow the wind from any direction where it's coming. This mechanically can be quite easy. I can put a ball bearing so that it, it can spin and follow the wind without problems. But the terrible news is if you think about there's a copper cable that comes from the dynamo and if this copper cable rotate and twist too much after some time it will cut itself so i need to think about something that can twist and doesn't tangle up the copper cable so maybe i can think about the place the piece that is inside the steering wheel inside your car there are two contacts is a rotary contact of the horn but this is quite expensive but i already know what to use I'm talking about this hair straightener. This gets hot, girls can keep it from the handle and twist hair around. But the most interesting part is the plug. It's made so that it can twist and turn around with a, without tangle up the copper inside. So we will see what's inside later. Now let's talk instead about all the mechanical parts. I need to put a ball bearing so that the windmill can spin around. Also because consider that the our planet is spinning clockwise, so I need to make sure it doesn't spin with it. So I need to place something 
to keep it straight, but let's start with the ball bearings. I need to think about a piece that can stand the weather without problems and this inside the bicycle is made with stainless steel. I can remove the pedals, don't throw them away because I will keep them for another procedure and now I have to make sure that there is a hole that passes all the way through the pedal base. There isn't, so I will make myself one with my drill and a very new uh, drill bit. So I can drill the hole. Lucky for me, this is a very soft stainless steel, so I can cut it very easy. I remove the part from the frame of the bicycle, I clean up all the paint, and this finally is the end result. Pretty nice, looks like just new. So this will be the main ball bearing when, where everything is spin. It's the vertical part where the, the wind turbine can follow the wind. Now I have to continue the part. I can weld this, that is the front part of the bicycle and connect both parts with this uh, stainless steel part that I saved from the scrap yard. I cut them, I weld them and after making sure that everything is perfectly aligned I can weld the parts together. And let me tell you, I really love how this came up. It looks like a very, has a very nice design, seems like a steampunk part and yeah, later I will paint it but that's a pity because it's very nice even like this, it's like my style, I mean it's steampunk, yeah. So this will be the part where everything is connected and now let's see what's inside the hair straightener. This is the component I was talking to you. There is a part that can spin and doesn't tangle up the copper cable. It's very similar to an RCA plug, but this is much better quality. I think it's stainless steel, but it's also a great idea to protect the parts from water, rain and humidity from the air. I pass a simple copper cable through the hole I drilled earlier and now I can connect to this copper cable on the top the, the part I dismount, I took apart from the hair straightener. I can seal up all the parts using some polyurethane glue, not silicone but polyurethane glue that sticks much better to all materials. Now let me, uh, let me show you a very cool trick. If you take some soap and put it on your fingers, you can model very easy uh, any kind of uh, glue like this. You can model silicone, polyurethane glue, and co construction adhesive without problems. So I'm sure that the part is perfectly centered and no water gets inside. Now let's take the pedals I took apart earlier. I cut one of them, I weld them together, and yeah, because this will be the part where the windmill and the back of it that keep everything aligned with the wind will be mounted. So this is the weld result. I can mount the pedal through the part of the windmill where there are also two copper connections where electricity flow through them. Only one part is missing, I'm talking about the base. I need to make myself like a tripod where to mount everything and I already know what to use. I'm talking about these steel parts that are quite heavy. I can weld them together, making sure that they are equally spaced also on the base. structure with some protective paint and now let's finish the electric connection. I can push from the bottom the, con the plug and goes inside the other part that can swivel around. I can then fix the bottom part with a lot of silicone so it doesn't move. And now let's talk about instead of the rudder I need to place on the back. And everything on the other side of my bicycle pedal and this is how it looks like. It looks amazing. Everything spins well but I'm sure we need to see better all the mechanical parts to see if they really work well. 
So let's make some tests. I'm moving down to the beach that is quite close from my garden. <laughs> Lucky for me. There is there isn't very uh, very good weather today, and the wind is pretty low. I'm talking about three knots. Maybe sometimes get higher to six knots, but yeah, it's quite light wind. So this time, let's see if the the profile I cut into the wood works. And let me tell you, there's so little wind, it's so light wind, that seeing this wind turbine spinning so fast really, really confirmed that the, the profile and cut into the wood give more acceleration to the wind turbine. The connection of the, le the electric connection can move and twist without problems. And as I was telling you, the profile looks great works perfectly later i will show you a little test that explain how well it works this is the rudder on the back you can see it's very lightweight i need to protect also this component from water and weather yeah but it works this is the part where i was telling you how the profile of the wind turbine really works so you can see that from this perspective the wind turbine is moving pretty fast considering there is, there's only three knots you can see from my hair that are barely moving they aren't really moving so this confirmed there's almost no wind but what happened if I would take the the rudder with my hand and move on the other side so move 180 degrees the the wind turbine so you can see now it's spinning pretty fast but if I turn it around the the profile I cut into the wood doesn't work anymore, so this is just the wind pushing against. You can see there's a good, nice difference. And now that I'm sure that all the mechanical parts are working, I can place the wind turbine just over there in the middle of some trees on top of a hill, and I guarantee you there's a very windy place. I know what you're thinking, placing an, a wind turbine like this in the middle of the trees isn't really efficient because the wind can, the trees can block some wind. I bring closer my EcoFlow, open the back port and connect the copper plug inside. Now let's talk about these connectors. This is the port, these are the ports where you can charge your EcoFlow. There is a regular AC that comes from your house and can char charge up the battery in just a couple hours, so it's very, very fast. There's another way you can charge it. You can connect it from for your car, so you have 12 volt coming from your car plug or your car battery, and, and I'm talking about this left con connector. And from the same connector, you can also connect some solar panels. But you can read from the connector that recognize only 11 volts or more to start charging the battery. So I need to solve the problem because the dynamo I choose can produce only six volts. And to do this, I can buy a very cheap component like this step up circuit. This has a capacitor inside so it can accumulate and boost up the voltages from six volts to 12 volts and give one single boost into the echo flow at four amperes, which are, is more than enough to uh, make it recognizable and charge a little boost at the time. happy now that finally I have electricity in my yard was something that I always dream about because before this I was working in front of my garage under the sun and was so hot it was a nightmare now I solve all my problems because I can produce my own electricity that charge the echo flow and echo flow delivers 1200 watt which is more than enough to power my welding machine my grinder my drill also I have put 
some light bulbs all around my garden. I also put a, a very powerful light bulb on top of a dinner place. And I can use all these things together because 1200 watt is more than enough for what I really need. So that's amazing. And it's also more amazing that I can charge the EcoFlow during the day using the solar panel and the windmill. And in the night, I can, I can use only the windmill. So I always have electricity flowing into the EcoFlow. <laughs> Amazing, no? I'll give you three little advice if you want to start a project. The first one is to consider to put multiple dynamos. I put only one. I wasn't thinking that the windmill will be so much powerful. So consider to put two or three dynamos in series so you can generate more electricity. Or maybe you can also consider to put gears. Maybe the, dynamo, the windmill make only 10 RPM and instead the, the dynamo make 100 RPM. So it's like a gear step up system. And, and something that you also have to think about is the length of the, the blades of the windmill. The longer they are, the <clears throat> lighter the wind will catch. Instead, if the wind is stronger, it, I suggest you to put the shorter blades. This will increase the RPM and then also the, uh, pro the electric production. So, that's a nice trick. You just have to think, find the right length of the blades. It's a bit tricky. I'm scared to cut mine, so I, I will make some tests with another model. So I really hope you can take inspiration from my project. If you start your own windmill, let me know in the comments below how your project is going. At this point, I leave you my two previous projects. Check them out and see you next week. Ciao, ciao.